Hey guys, welcome to Voice Bootcamp, a global name in unified communication. Hello, my name is Faisal Khan, CEO and founder of VoiceBootcamp.com and UC Collaboration. In this self-study kit, I'm going to cover the lab one where how to create an auto-attendant menu application using Cisco Unified Contact Center Script 10.5. This application will show you how to set up a basic menu, sub-menu levels for your customers. It will also show you how to set up an interaction between this menu script and a system application using a subflow. Now with this script, we're going to cover the following options. First, you can accept the call as a call coming in, and then collect some information about that basic call, such as the caller ID and the call number. Followed by, we're going to create call it a subroutine to check if the current date is a holiday. Because obviously, if there's a holiday, you're not going to accept a call. Or most company does, doesn't usually accept a call during the holidays. We're also going to check the system state. Is the is the call center open? By connecting, by uh, obtaining information from an external file. Once these two parameters are checked, then we're going to set up a day of week as well as time of day to control what time the call comes in. Now, creating a menu and menu options followed by a call redirect and submenus will do some uh, basic error checking with an exception. The script that I'm about to cover is actually quite uh, almost uh, widely available on Cisco websites, but I'm actually covering more detail with more interaction explanation. This is a flowchart of how what's happening on each steps. A customer will dial a phone number or there is a four digit, eleven digit, depending on how it is configured on your call manager or PVX. So assume the customer is going to dial this four digit number. The call will come into the contact center and is going to supposed to hear a welcome prompt. But prior to hearing a welcome prompt, what we're going to do is we're going to do some validation check. First of all, we're going to make sure that if the company is open. Now there is a, you can use a day a time of day routing to control that, or you can create a some sort of uh, external fl uh, file flagship. For example, um, an operator or a company uh, last one to leave the company can go to a website and click on office close, and it will update a particular file which will have a kind of a, a mark that says office is closed today. Uh, so you can set a manual flag, holiday, uh, automatic flag, and whatnot. So if it is manually flagged that yes, the company is closed, then what we're going to do at this stage, a call will be sent to the close greeting, which will say, uh, sorry, we're closed for the day, um, business hour, blah, blah, blah. But if it is not closed, then we're going to do a holiday check. Holiday check to ensure that you, you know it is not one of those public holiday where you are required to be uh, closed, either due to stats holiday or by your own choice. Well, if it's a holiday check, what you need to do, we're going to create a an XML file with a list of holidays defined. Now, that XML file can be updated manually or through some sort of web interface, depending on how you set it up. This holiday check is going to verify by calling an external holiday check script. That external holiday check script will be a subflow within this main parent script. Now, once, if the holiday check meaning that returns a value true, that means yes, it is a holiday, then we're going to play the close greeting again, which will say, sorry, we're closed for the day. Now you can play the same close greeting, or you can customize a different close greeting for holiday and wishing the customers at the same time. Now if the holiday check pass says no, that means that no, it is not holiday, then we're going to do day, uh, day of the week. Uh, whether it's Saturday or Sunday, if it is Saturday or Sunday, the call will be sent to the close greeting. But if it is not, it will continue the next step. Now, if it is, uh, um, after the day of the week, then we're going to uh, verify the time of the day. If it comes between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., the call will go to uh, opening uh, opening greeting. But if it is 5 p.m. to uh, after 5 p.m., the call will go to go, uh, close greeting. Now, if the company's automatic flag is set to manually open, that means companies open at any given time you know sometimes what happen is you may have um, an emergency session where you may have some employee working at midnight uh, because you have some emergency going on within your product and you want to provide a support so what do you do that act, that file that we talk about the in initial at the beginning right here manual flag if that's set to manually open that means you have forced the system to open manually then the, co the call will go directly to the welcome message 
as opposed to going through this check. Anyway, uh, so this is the initial step. The next thing, uh, if it is within that business hours and Monday to Friday, the call will go to the uh, main main menu. Main menu will give you an option of press one for sales, two for tech support, three to co contact support, and so and so. Now, depending on which menu option you press, uh, pre-sales will then call another sub menu, which will have his own men menu of his own. Uh, one for unified communication. If you press that, the call will be transferred to a given extension. Uh, these extension will be defined in your list uh, as a variable and of course you can modify them if you need to on a web page basis. If you support uh, press 2 for support the call will go to support menu but for uh, contract support and partner support they will be directed directly to a specific extension. So we're going to build this uh, from ground up from zero I'm going to show you how the script is built and I'm going to test the script for you as well as we're going to cover some of the error checking mechanism and I'm going to show you how to debug this script uh, or how, what's going on in the script using the debug command. So are you ready? Alright, well these are some of my prompts that we're going to provide. Uh, these prompts are, was provided by Cisco uh, as part of the package. Uh, you can again, th these are available widely in a public domain. Um, these prompts are th which says uh, 1101, thank you for calling Cisco system. 1102 for pre-sales press 1 for technical support press 2 these are already predefined web file now the numbers are just basically the name of the file followed by dot web so this is basically a look uh, uh, the web prompt files that are available you can replace this prompt file with your own custom file if you need to now once you have this prompt file make sure please you upload this prompt onto the contact center express server so you must upload them first before you execute this script. Now there are two scripts we're going to work. The first script is going to be called Voice Bootcamp Menu. This is the main menu of the call center. When working with Voice Bootcamp Menu, a slide will say the main script, Voice Bootcamp Menu. Within this Voice Bootcamp Menu, we're going to call a second menu using a subflow called Holiday Check. Using the Holiday Check, we're going to validate if today is a holiday or not. So this is uh, a separate uh, script that again I will show it to you how it is constructed. And this holiday uh, check will then return a value either true or false. And that value will be returned back to the main script. And when it is returned to the main script, the main script will use that value to continue with the script itself. Now whenever we are working on a holiday script itself, on the bottom of the pair slide you will see holiday script. So that will tell you which script you are on. Alright, step by step configuration explanation. First step, in the script we are going to create with a start. So this is your start script. Followed by um, accept. Next step is to is accept a call. Now with the, uh, once we accept the call, we uh, sorry start and accept the call, every every application must accept the contact. Now the accept contact is usually for JTAPI telephony. So if you are dialing from a call, the accept basically answers the call for you. Up until it hits this particular uh, steps, the phone continue to ring. Uh, so when you when you hit this particular steps, the call will be answered. Now followed by that we, we, we do a kind of an error check. Error check that says at any given time within the application should there be uh, any any exception, meaning that in any error, we would like to take certain action. On exception, we're saying that if the contact inactive exception, meaning that, okay, customer dialed in, but he's not taking any action. He's, he or she may not even be there anymore, but phone is somehow hang uh, is still connected. Well, if the contact remains inactive, like you know, when you go to a website, like a banking site, you log into your online banking, uh, you haven't touched the banking portal for like 15 minutes and gives you a warning that okay we're for security reason we're going to disconnect this session well this is really similar to what is doing contact inactive action uh, exception so when it hits that it is going to go to an area where it says exception ie which happens to be a label so go to exception ie so i'm going to go ahead and take a look at that script so this is the main script we're going to work on 
uh, as you say start uh, first we drag this start is part of your script uh, then you have accept which is under your contact you drag this particular here right here you right click and you can put some comment if you want to now on exception can be dragged from the general tab you'll see call on exception go to now before I configure the on extension go to is that it needs to be connect uh, sent to an uh, exception IE uh, sorry exception CIE uh, exception CIE is a label which is defined at the bottom of the script right here so this label is created by dragging this particular label command right here and then rename it as exception C so anyway so you it, it's okay to create the label at this stage even though it is at the bottom of the page but that is particular fine I mean you will have to create a bunch of uh, labels anyway so this basically will start at this stage but it will get clear at the bottom of the page when I go back to that uh, label it says after label clear the exception that means reset the uh, the error checking all right now after that we're going to collect some information from the customer using the get call contact info what the get call contact info does using uh, it basically collect the call number and calling number and store them in a variable and we'll use this variable later in the in, you know in, in the script itself now once we collect the information our next step will be check the system state the system state basically is stored in a file called current state.xml. Now, this is file is something you can create a very basic XML file, and this is the content of this particular file. Now, in this file, I have a, a field called current state automatic. So there are three options you have: either is a manual, manually open, manually close, or use automatic. If it is manually open, the call will go directly to the welcome prompt and the menu option but if it is manually closed the call will immediately go to the phone uh, sorry the close greeting uh, at the end of the script but if it is automatic then what's going to happen is it's going to take a look at the time of day uh, day of the week to validate if it is between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. or 5 uh, Monday to Friday or not so that's why by default it is set to automatic uh, you're still controlling the state of the application by saying you know time of day because you know if the call comes in at Saturday 5 5 p.m. because of that time of day checking is going to reject that call but w there's a way to bypass the whole process by changing this automatic to manually open because manually open means that hey you might be coming at midnight all of a sudden to provide a support for a group of customers either because there's a hurricane or there's something emergency took place so in that scenario, you just come in, you trigger this, uh, it changes a uh, particular XML file to manually open. Either you can do it, do it through um, by doing it manually by opening this file in a notepad and upload it, or create a web interface to update this file. Anyway, so to be able to uh, uh, use this file, we must upload this file in our Contact Center Express. In the Contact Center Express, you want to go to Application, Document Management and en underscore us and there you will find the xml file that, that, that we have updated okay coming back uh, now now that we have the file how do we read that file the first thing we do we use a get xml document step to read sorry not here uh, So what we're going to do is using the car, uh, create XML document, we're going to open this particular file. Now do not uh, get confused. It does not actually create the XML file. What it does, create a reference to an existing file. So this file must exist in order for this uh, create XML document to be successful. So that particular file is provided using a variable or you can use the word doc current X, uh, state XML. Uh, so cu current XML state is a variable and you're getting uh, this particular file stored into this variable. Then once that is done, you let me clear up this screen. Then I have a variable right here. It's called current state, which is a string variable. 
this current state, what it's doing is going to read this content of this file, which is right here, the content of this file, but it's going to obtain this particular value. Now to do that, it use a little uh, programming syntax, rather I would say, with a descendant colon colon current state. So meaning that basically in a sh layman's term, look for this tag, which is right here, and get the value for that particular tag. Now the value for this tag is automatic. So it's going to store that automatic value as a current state. Alright, so it's going to take that value, put it into the current state variable. Uh, so basically now the current state will be equal to automatic. Now using a va uh, uh, step called switch, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to compare. Switch between these three options. So these three options are basically manually typed. Bas they're basically a string. They're not a syntax or of any kind. So you're, you're basically saying switch. If it is manually open, go to welcome. Uh, go to welcome basically says go to a welcome label. Now what is a welcome label? If you look at here, the welcome label is defined right here. So it will, it will jump into this area and it's going to play the welcome prompt. If it is manually closed, then go to close label, which will go to right there, close label. Okay, but if it is automatic, go to check holiday, which will go at the very top right here. Uh, sorry, not there, right here. So switch command basically does that. If it is default, then we're going to check the holiday. So in case for some reason it's not able to read this file or there is nothing, you know, this particular field is empty, then the call will directly come here. For some reason, if this application either doesn't exist and or cannot be read for whatever reason, then we put an exception there saying, on exception document not found, uh, go to exception I, um, DNFE which will go directly at the very bottom right here. And of course it's going to clear the exception and then continue to the end of the script. So, But again, you can always put a new prompt or whatnot. So let's take a look at what we've done so far. We start a script first and we then use a go to uh, on exception by dragging that on exception option here. We right click and we select that Cisco uh, com dot Cisco dot contact contact inactive exception, and they're going to go to that particular label. Now this label must be defined uh, before you can use these particular steps. Followed by that, we're going to get get con contact info. Uh, this steps is going to get the calling number and call number, and it's stored into this variable caller ID and call number. These variables are defined right here on your variable pen as you can see they're basically a string type of variable and after that we're going to use a document step to create an XML document right here drag it into this we create um, a, we create a variable called current XML state which is the value called doc which is by default anyway then right click go to properties and what we're going to do, we're going to provide the name of the file by saying doc uh, bracket current state.xml bracket. And then document store the value into this variable that we just created. Again, we have one on exceptions. Now, as of uh, version 10, the, the, there's no more dot not found exception, it's basically document exception. And once that part is done, now we're going to collect use a get XML document data. And in that XML document data, we're going to say that read this current XML state and then store the result as current state. Now, the XML path basically, the path is saying uh, read the content, you know, the val value automatic into this format. So basically, you will type it in this syntax. Okay, now we go to switch. In the switch, we're going to say, okay, switch value from this variable called current state. These are the possible value in there, and these are the label. 
Okay, so if it is manually open, we go to we go to welcome. If it is uh, manually closed, we go to close label. And if it is holiday, we go to check holiday label. So the same goes for the default. So and the next step will be the holiday. Okay, so next we're gonna go and check the holiday. Now we do that by uh, con by calling an external script called holidaycheck.aef, and we uh, store uh, the value that is returned by that application into a variable called is holiday. The word is holiday is basically a boolean variable in my main script, which is also defined in the holiday script as well. And we're going to return a value if it is true back to this particular holiday. Now, obviously, is hol if if the is holiday is true, then obviously the office should be closed. Otherwise, it is open. So we use a soft flow right here, a call soft flow, and we define the value uh, very, uh, application name, and we define the variable name. So this is the this is the variable within my uh, main script and this is the variable within the holiday script so right here now if it if you take a look at the variable is holidays basically an added variable boolean is holiday false by default is false but in the soft flow which you can call right here from general tab you can uh, drag and drop you right click on the properties and you define the name of the file, the, uh, the external file. And now keep in mind the name of the external file must be in the same uh, uh, location as the main script. Now the output we're gonna say is holiday. We're gonna modify and we're going to say that the source this is the local variable and this is the remote variable. Remote variable meaning the variable in the holiday script. If it is returned true, the next step is going to be obviously do an if then else logical check. Now we are in the holiday script. So let's, if you take a look at uh, this uh, little bit check right here, it says we're in a holiday script. So if you open the holiday script and you'll see something similar to this. What is the holiday script is doing first is uh, setting some variables, current year, current month, uh, current day. So basically what is saying that the current year is going to be whatever the date today take the last just the year from there and put it into this variable for current month is whatever the month today take the month only and store it into this variable but if the month is like uh, let's say one two three four then what we want to do is that if you're going to we're going to do a check if the length of the month is only one digit then we're going to make it zero one you know how January is a um, you know month one, so we're gonna write it as zero one as opposed to just one. So we're gonna say set current month zero plus whatever the value of current month is. But if the length is like if if the month is ten, eleven, twelve, then we then it's gonna be false. For the day, we'll do the same thing. Check just the day of the month, validate the length, and of course add zero if it is less uh, one or uh, in in the length wise. Once we set each one of these variable, next we're going to do is construct the current date. The current date is going to be current month plus current day plus current year. So you're basically creating a format: month first, day first, next year followed by. So this is the script that we are going to open. Um, the holiday check. The current simply is a using the this is a variable as you can see current these are my variables they're all string type I'm using the set command defined right under the general tab I drag and drop here and I'm going to say set current year equal D date now mean today dot year so just take the year portion from the current date do the same thing for month, uh, month and you're going to do a length check if the current month dot length 
so you can go to properties on that you can go to um, the variable condition and just put a current dot length in a bracket equal equal one when you do that you go you basically you're saying that take the, this is the basically prop method of that property variable and you can always find right here somewhere here should be the length okay so once that is done set the current month zero current uh, plus current month uh, if it is uh, equal to one add the zero to it if if it is false go to the next step you do that for both uh, length uh, check verification for the day as well as a month now we set the construct the date we're, we're going to say that the current date is equal to basically current month plus current day plus current year once this is done we're going to use create XML document to read the holiday.xml file the holiday.xml is contains this these details this is an XML file that has a list of holidays date defined now for some country most of the holidays are fixed some countries most of the holidays uh, some of the holidays can be variable especially in Middle East where uh, holidays may follow certain um, like if I follow the sun or the moon so the date is never exactly the same so you have to manually update that every year maybe whereas for North America most of the date are quite fixed so th for those date you can once you configure the file it remains as it is alright so using this holidays uh, uh, XML file we're gonna open that particular file into and create into a variable called XML holidays then we're going to do a check we're going to create a variable called holiday ID which represent the IDs that you have right here we're going to go through this loop we're going to say if the holiday ID is less than or equal to 15 as long as the value is between 1 to 15 then get oops my mistake uh, Using, you're going to say then we're going to retrieve the values these values that you see right here and store it into a holiday retrieve okay holiday retrieve so it's going to go through this all the line because hey we have to check the entire list to see if the current date is equal to holiday we cannot just do one and then say okay forget it, we're done we're going to have to go through the entire list so we're doing a validation we're going to say that holiday retrieve equal get XML data uh, holiday look for this particular field which is right here look for the child field holiday which is right here and then look for the attribute ID which is right here and basically we're going to do a holiday ID dot to string now once that is done we're going to do a if then else check if the car if the holiday retrieve is equal to current date so if any of them happen to be equal to current date set the is holiday equal to true I don't have to I mean see if the first one match I don't have to check the rest simple as that so if any of this is holiday obviously it's going to trigger this application we're going to set the value to true and then go to end so we're going to ex exit from here come directly to this label but if it is false, we're going to increment the holiday ID by one and we're going to repeat this loop. We're going to repeat this loop. So the idea is to go through the entire file at least once. Okay, so once this holiday is done and uh, our, if it is true, it's going to return the value right here. Uh, holiday true is going to return it back to the main script. The main script is going to re receive. A signal so if is holiday equal to true then we're gonna go to close greeting if it is false we're gonna continue with our script okay so once if 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 the is holiday is equal to false then what we're gonna do we're gonna do a day of the week te test so in the day of the week we're going to validate if it is a Monday to Friday or not so in the day week, the day of the week Monday to Friday we're gonna have two clause Monday to Friday and weekend uh, Monday to Friday is going to be 6 a.m. Uh, within the Monday to Friday, we're going to have a time of day, which is 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., uh, where the call will go to welcome prompt. Any time after uh, outside that range, the call will go to close greeting. So is the weekend. 
so within my main script so this is I'm done with my holiday within my main script when if it's true if the holiday is true then go to close if it is false of course continue with the script now as we continue the script we're going to have two uh, option time of day which is which is something you can create by clicking day of the week uh, drag and drop here go to properties and with this little comment you can make your own comment categories so day of the week you know commenting a program helps uh, someone else read uh, and understand how what the program is doing so within uh, the options you define the time zone the time zone your uh, you know the primary time zone of the server and then of course you look at uh, the connection the connection you have two connection Monday to Friday and you check Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday and for weekend is Saturday Sunday you must check all the date otherwise the system will not let you save it now when you have these two uh, uh, options you will see they uh, they will be branched out right here within Monday to Friday I am dragging a time of day steps in there and in the time of day I will have very similar two connection again you can comment and then create a two connection 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. same time zone uh, the range of the time you can define modify however you want it and obviously there's always going to be rest so anything that is that, is, that does not fall within this range is going to be part of the rest and you cannot delete the rest all right so within the time 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. go to welcome prompt uh, go to welcome section which is right here and if it is rest outside that range then go to close greeting uh, if it is weekend go to close greeting as well the next step is come to welcome prompt at this stage you're gonna play a prompt now the prompt file there's a prompt file called p welcome p for prompt welcome is the description and this is the name of the web file that we're going to play and this is defined in my prompt play prompt now play prompt can be get, uh, obtained from the media outlet right there and you can click on play prompt option you go to properties there you have a prompt the name of the prompt you want to play from the drop down and barge in capability to be able to barge into a call and interruptible means at any given time you're listening to the prompt you should be able to press the menu option input uh, you have a yes or no uh, so basically flashing your buffer alright so click OK it's gonna play the prompt then it's gonna go to the main menu so this is the val validation of the time now welcome prompt will play the prompt make sure the prompt files are uploaded the menu option that we have uh, after the welcome prompt will provide menu for pre-sales, tech support, contract support and uh, partner support and operator. These are the options that we're going to define and you can drag and drop the menu option from the media outlet and each menu option so we'll right click on the menu properties in the general we're going to select the option called interruptible meaning that I should be able to interrupt and select a menu at any given time and then click on the prompt to collect define what menu prompt to play menu prompt will say press 1 uh, for pre-sales press 1 for technical support press 2 so and so if there is an error we're going to continue uh, and then if there is a if you want to barge into the call you say yes once the menu options is customized then you go to input input defines you some uh, timer for example timeout within three seconds if there's if the user does not enter a menu go to timeout branch and if they enter invalid number three time or more then obviously max retry will kick in click on filter to create a menu uh, in the filter you're going to define all the menu options you have pre-sales tech support contract support partner support when you select each one of these connection make sure you select the menu option otherwise it's not going to be inactive so I'm going to go ahead and show you the menu options go to properties of the label sorry that's my menu you can drag the menu right from here All 
Alright, so when you click on OK uh, on the filter, you'll see the branches uh, comes up, uh, expand, and you can always click on expand all to see all the options. Under pre-sales, we're going to have another sub menu. Again, very similar to uh, the previous menu. Uh, again, right click on properties, and we can click on all these options. Now, let's take a look at the pre-sales. What the pre-sales is doing is that pre-sales is giving another option, another menu option. Press one for unified communication, and when you press one, it sets the extension. Th there's two variables you have, multiple variables here. One variable is called extensions called extensions right here and what this variable is going to do is going to hold a number extension number to dial but which extension number each department have their own so we are assigning the value from extension unified communication into the variable called extension so for each department we have created a separate variable called extension unified communication with their extension number so depending on which menu option you put in the value of extension will change based on that menu if you press one the value of extension is going to be equal to extension unified communication variable if you press two the uh, value of the extension is going to be extension security so depending on which uh, option you select is going to go uh, assign those value but regardless of what is the value of the extension the next step is to go to transfer extension label which come all the way down right here there's a label called transfer extension there I have a call redirect and the call redirect allows you to direct a, a direct a call to the variable call extension so this is why it's important to uh, have, uh, you know make sure that the extension has a right uh, value now whenever we s use a call redirect if it's successful you want to use a set contact info which is available under call contact set call uh, my mistake no under contact my, my my apology set contact info and what you want to do in there you want to say that the handled is marked meaning that the call has been successfully completed if you do not mark that call after upon successful what happen is in your reporting you might see this call as abandoned call so you, you don't want to do that you know you want to have a proper recording to make sure that the calls are being handled so going back up where my the pre-sales menu is for each option you notice my extensions are assigned with their respective extension then we go to transfer to transfer the call for technical support I will have the very similar thing technical support will have his own menu which will have these filters the menu prompt called P tech support menu this is the variable that is defined with the prompt number and of course uh, general which is interruptible menu uh, tech support menu will it branch it out with multiple options yeah, network emergency existing case new case and so on, and go back options to go back to main menu when you click on options to go back to main menu it what it does is going to it says go to main menu which means it will jump all the way right here and start all over again but if you select network emergency it's going to assign network emergency extension into the variable call extension and send the calls to the transfer to extension section so you do that for technical support for all the branches. Now you look at the timeout. When it's timeout, it says go tech support, meaning it's going to go all the way again and start the menu option again. If it is unsuccessful, it's going to start all over again for that particular sub menu. Now you do the same thing for technical support, as you can see. And for operator, you will also do the same thing. Assign the value, go to transfer. For all cases, timeout uh, for the entire the main menu if you click on timeout it says set the operator extension and if it's unsuccessful start the main menu all over again call redirect does exactly the same thing redirect the call and then set the call contact info to market and then you end the call if it's busy go to main menu if it's invalid go to main menu if it's unsuccessful go to main menu when you go to main menu it comes all the way top and start all over again 
So the rest rest of the script, like I said, every uh, option that you have here, whenever it says go to transfer, it's going to go to the level where it says transfer. It's going to use this extension that you have as part of your call redirect. And then once it's successful, it's going to handle the call as a mark, as handled, that I have completed the call. For any other option, it's going to go to the main menu. Transfer, when you transfer a call, make sure when you use a call redirect to transfer the call choose the extension variable right here you can also define the extension number but then again you know you don't know what the extension is going to be anyway uh, it's assigned based on what menu options is selected and when you mark the call uh, it starts the mark that means the call has been handled successfully so that in the reporting tool it does not see the call as abundant call all right so end of the script make sure the end of the script you terminate the call with the script end of uh, triggering call termination uh, if you don't terminate the call it can get stuck in the system so it's always a good idea to terminate a call so this is my full script now I'm gonna save this and of course I will upload this to my call manager Okay, I'm going to create an application. So these are all my extensions that I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify them. Okay, as you can see, I have four phones registered and my extensions are 2001, 2004. So I'm going to update the script with those extensions. So as you can see, security extension, I'm going to make it as 2002, router 2102, unified communication 2003, router 2103, switch, network emergency 2004, Let's see, make sure I have enough. Yeah. 2104. And I'll just copy, for, you know, just for that, everything else. Okay. So you save this. Our trigger is 2900. So we're going to dial that number. I'm going to do is validate the uh, script to make sure script is correct. So click on validate okay so far good I'm going to close this script and I'm going to do a debug reactive script oh I'm logged in as anonymous I'm going to go is log out and log in as um, the user so from 2001 I'm going to dial I'm going to make it a smaller window. Okay, so now I'm going to do a reactive debugging. Because I'm connected, I should see the voice bootcamp main menu. And select 40 seconds. Okay, so I'm going to wait 45 seconds for the script to be executed. So on this stage, I'm going to dial 2900. As you can see, the script started. Now I can click on step, uh, step to see as, it, as a call goes through each step. Accept the call. No exceptions so far. Get the call details. 
check if it is holiday or sorry if the office is automatically open or if it's a manually open using the XML file I'm going to check the on exception to see if the file is not found or not uh, can read the data from that particular file that will ultimately read or that is automatic manually open uh, this is my main uh, recall switch switch the value that it detected was automatic so it came down to the automatic uh, option and it's going to check the holiday it's going to call the subflow now you cannot uh, you cannot do debugging on subflow from the main uh, script so you have to unfortunately assume the subflow is working if it's a holiday then you do uh, based on the value that is returned is holiday or not if it is true it will go to close but because it's false it's going to go to day of the week day of the week will determine this is a Monday to, time uh, is a Monday to Friday it determines it's 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. between it goes to welcome prompt jump to welcome prompt at this stage you're going to hear Okay, thank you for calling Cisco system. Next option. For pre sales, please press one. Press for one. Support, please press two. For contract support, please press three. Okay, I'm gonna press one. Please pre Next. For unified communications, please press one. For unified for communication, three, okay. Press two. I'm gonna press for one for unified communication. Press three. Set the extension. So in this case, the whatever the extension of the set unified communication is, which is I believe right here, two zero zero three. And if I want, I can change the extension if uh, at this stage I can change the variable in the fly on the fly. So it goes to that. Ooh, something happened. Oh, I waited too long. I think okay so as you can see inactive triggered so I'll redial thank you for calling Cisco systems for pre -sale. press one for unified communications there you go dial the extension 2003 because I was I waited for too long the in exception uh, on exception uh, inactive uh, occurred so as you can see the script works I'm gonna run through one more time from the debugging perspective but this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to run automatic debugging like uh, not automatic but like straight through debugging redial I'm going to start click on this one as opposed to go step by step goes all the way thank you for calling Cisco systems press one for unified communications there you go okay Okay, so as you can see, the call actually was successfully connected. Now I'm gonna run one more time just to see. There was an error message I saw at the end. I wasn't sure exactly what was it, so just to validate. Oops, my mistake. Make sure I run the script first. Thank you for calling Cisco. Press one one rings the phone okay contact is inactive when getting a channel okay that part I have to troubleshoot as to see why I'm getting that message it says contact was inactive when getting a channel so uh, probably some timer or some other issues but I'll have to troubleshoot that and if I do find the solutions I will make sure in a, uh, I put a note into this particular series if you like this video that will be uh, uh, you know if really appreciate if you can give us a feedback on our website on the review sections you can send an email to uh, support at voice boot bootcamp we will send you um, a review link actually I'm gonna give it to you right now you know if you enjoyed it I really appreciate a few word about uh, about this explanation on this video and anything you can say uh, about voice bootcam and UC collaboration if you guys can go to this particular website https plus dot google dot com slash plus voice bootcam inc new york slash about when you go to this page you will see this right here uh, there's a review section 
if you could uh, you know spend a few sec a few minutes of your time uh, write a review uh, you know give us uh, whatever the story you believe or we, we, we deserve and anything that you'd like to say about this video about us and any of our product I appreciate your time for taking to watch this video um, hopefully you, learn, you have learned something we have many videos like this in our UCCX self-study kit um, and various other kit that we have and uh, we'll you know mention this video if you're interested to purchase them mention that you have watched uh, found this uh, information through this video will be gladly give you uh, some discounts on that product or any sort of other promotional offer thank you guys for your time and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you again in the next uh, video series